It just needs to hold down these pieces of fabric in a more aesthetic way than my basting stitches. I'm pretty sure it's gonna look really cool in the end. I just, can we get to the end? And I'm happy to say that the stitching is really helping sort of bring this design together and make it look a little bit more like something and a little bit less like my scrap drawer just puked all over a piece of canvas. What it did kind of force me to do was just to make up stuff. Just make stuff up. This is the alternating T-Rex. Again, very official, but look at that. Hello friends and welcome or welcome back. As usual, I'm Shannon Makes, scrap fabric hoarder by day, circus artist by night. And this week's project is going to be an attempt both to bust some of my stash, but also to bust my more control freak tendencies in the sewing room because I'm going to be using my scrap bin, some leftover notions, and a bit of embroidery floss to explore the crazy quilt style of patchwork. Now this was heavily inspired by Christine Vike, who has an absolutely lovely video on the topic which will be linked in the description and as soon as I saw how cute her results were, I knew I had to try it for myself. And since I had a short overseas contract in my future, a portable hand sewing project seemed like the perfect activity to bring with me. Now, spoiler alert, I enjoyed this project so much that I actually want to do another patchwork project, this time with some community input from all of you. So stay tuned to learn a bit more about that later on. But first things first, let's just hop back in time and learn a bit more about the origins of this project. So I've got the concept, this crazy patchwork quilt idea, and I also know that I want to use it probably to make some sort of knitting bag, again, inspired by Christine. It's recommended to use some sort of stiff-ish, sturdy backing fabric to put all of your patchwork on. So naturally, I was just gonna go digging through my stash and see if I had something in there that would do the job. But before I even had time to do that, I literally stumbled across the perfect thing in the garbage, like I always do. So I came across this while I was walking canal. It was in the garbage bag and it is exactly the right material. It is a pretty darn good size and it's in perfect condition. Like it still even has the tag on it. So, you know, we are absolutely going to use this as the backing fabric for our project, which means that the next thing we need are all of our scraps of fabric. Now, one of the things that most attracted me to the crazy quilt concept is the fact that it essentially uses just leftovers and scraps from previous projects. And since we all know that I am a hoarder of all crafting debris, it should be a surprise to absolutely no one that I have an entire drawer full of exactly that. So, not surprisingly, as I'm staring at this, since these are all scraps from my own leftover sewing projects, there are a lot of fabrics in here that not only do I really like, but that go pretty well together because they're all kind of, you know, related in terms of their color scheme. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dump this out on the table, spread it all out, and we can have a look at what's going on here and if there are some fabrics that maybe speak to us more than others for this knitting bag. So I've got everything all sorted out by colorway here and we've got sort of four distinctive piles. So we have the cooler blues over here. We've got the neutral whites, creams, and grays over here. We have the rather large pile of earthy hobbit tones. And then we have the one red fabric. This is from my Our Flag Means Death robe, which was a super fun video, great show. One of my favorite reveals of all time was uh, the montage for this, but I don't really wear reds. They don't work super well with my skin tone. So this 
Easy, out of the question. Which means I have to decide between the blues and the hobbit tones. And I mean, was it really even a question ever? Of course, obviously, I'm gonna go with the hobbit tones. But if you would like some justification other than oh, my heart says so, there is actually a, a logical reasoning behind it. And that is that of my neutral tones, there are several fabrics that have a white background and a colored print on it. And all three of the prints have Hobbit colors on them. So all of these are gonna go match much better with the earth tones I've got going on here. That means that these are out of the question and our bag is going to be a mix of neutrals and earthy Hobbit tones, which I think sounds just lovely. So now I think the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, take this bag apart, get all the stitches out of it and get it laying flat. I think it's just gonna be way easier to work on that way and then I can sew it back up at the very end. And then we can basically start laying everything out on here and actually creating the crazy quilt part of it, which I'm super excited for. So let's get to it. I basically went through my entire room digging out ribbons, buttons, trim, beads, basically any miscellaneous crafting supplies that I've been collecting and hoarding from thrift stores and dumpsters over the past few years and that were even vaguely hobbit colored. All right, let's get the stitches out of this puppy. This is not the normal way that I would assemble a bag, which means I probably probably should take pictures of how it was assembled so that I know how to put it back together. That would be the smart thing to do, wouldn't it? Or some video. I, I have cameras. I could literally just take video of how this was assembled. The good news is this should be fairly easy to take apart because the stitches are ginormous. Even the serge stitches here are huge. So should come apart fairly quickly. Shrink. They're big stitches, but there's a lot of them. It's like they always say, if you don't know how to tie a knot, tie a lot. Oh, that's why it surged. That, my friends, is why it surged. So, definitely gonna run this through the serger. One side down, one to go. Give them the old razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. Well, I feel like I say this every video, but it remains true that took way longer than I thought it was going to, but it was 100% worth it because now all of my raw edges are very nice and taken care of and we aren't gonna have any sort of Hansel and Gretel situation going on, leaving little fabric scraps everywhere I go, which means that it's gonna be time to put this lovely sewing machine away until the very end of the project because the vast majority of the sewing from here on out is gonna be done by hand and probably on a plane or in another country. It's gonna be an experience. Then I started laying out the scraps on the bag, trying to find an aesthetically pleasing arrangement with all of the colors, patterns, and textures that used up as much of each scrap as possible without cutting anything down too further and making more scraps. This was a process of placing, replacing, fiddling, reordering, tweaking, and rearranging until I was happy with the placement, overlap, and balance of colors and shapes on the bag. Then I could fold all the raw edges under and baste the fabric in place, a step that I definitely didn't want to skip in this case because I knew the project would be opened and closed several times in the travel process and I didn't want to worry about the fabric shifting around or pins falling out. So it's been a couple hours already and I am not even halfway done. And I just need to keep reminding myself that 
I need to let go of the control freak that I usually am in the sewing room and that the whole concept of the crazy quilt is that the beauty comes from the randomness and the hodgepodge nature and the colors and the textures and all the effort that comes in the stitching afterwards and that's where I should really be focusing my energy not on trying to piece this in the most careful method possible. So we keep rolling, we keep piecing and basting and trying to trust the process. I have no doubt that it's gonna look good in the end. Well, I have a tiny doubt that it's gonna look again, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna look really cool in the end. I just, can we get to the end? Right now it just looks a little bit like a mess. Let go of the control freak. <laughs> So I kept on working long into the evening, trying to get the entire bag laid out and basted before I got on my flight. The next day, with my canvas all prepped and my suitcase in hand, I started right in on the embroidery the minute we passed through security. Now, as you can imagine, sewing a large canvas in a tiny airplane seat is maybe not the most ergonomic of endeavors, but it actually wasn't that bad. Definitely way better than trying to sleep sitting up, which inevitably, at least for me, finishes by drooling on your neighbor and waking up with the most exhausting of neck aches. Plus, the best part was definitely the built-in scissor hook on the back of the seat in front of me, which was actually incredibly useful for not losing them over the entire six hour flight. All right, so here is where we're at after roughly six hours of sewing. And I say six hours because I did end up sewing for almost the entire flight. And I'm happy to say that the stitching is really helping sort of bring this design together and make it look a little bit more like something and a little bit less like my scrap drawer just puked all over a piece of canvas. So that's good news. My plan of attack so far has been basically to try and just pick one main stitch and use that on each seam to hold each piece down without getting too elaborate or involved or ornate. I figure right now main goal is just to get everything held down and then I can go in later once that's done and like add some decorative touches. Now was I fully successful at doing that? No, I did kind of go into some elaborate ornateness on a couple of these themes, but I did for the most part keep it under control. But now uh, it is almost one o'clock Montreal time and I have to be, you know, functioning and uh, awake in a few hours. So I think I'm gonna go take a little nap before I catch my second flight. But she did not, in fact, go take a nap. She pulled out her embroidery floss and her needle, and legend has it that to this day, in the right light, you can still see her sitting there stitching away on her crazy quilt instead of getting some proper sleep. Hello, friends. Um, nothing says jet lag quite like a little 3 a.m. stitch sesh in the bathroom. Am I right? Naturally, I thought I can't sleep. And I might as well just work on this some because it's the perfect jet lag project. It's quiet. And I thought I would just sit here and stitch a little bit and share some thoughts I was having with you on the process. Kind of what I, what I was thinking about all this. So let's get going. So the original plan that I had was 
before getting on the plane, I wanted to go and look at a bunch of different types of stitches. So I wanted to go look at some, some examples from magazines from the 1890s, kind of like what Christine had. She had a booklet with like lots of examples of contemporary stitches from the 1890s. I also wanted to go, you know, scroll through Pinterest and look at some more modern crazy quilting or embroidery stitches. But the packing process it 100% did not go uh, quite as smoothly as planned and was very rushed and last minute. And I did not have time to do that, which meant that I got on the plane rather underprepared for me. I like to really plan things out. I like to know what I'm doing ahead of time. If you've been here a little while, you'll know that I am by no means an embroidery expert. My cape that I made last autumn, my embroidered Hobbit Sea cape, was the first time I had ever embroidered anything, ever. And it turned out really well and I'm very happy with it, but it's also a very different type of embroidery than this. Uh, so there's not that much carryover, quite honestly. And I did feel a bit underprepared for this. Um, but what it did kind of force me to do was just to make up stuff, to kind of let go of that desire to have a game plan and to just wing it. And honestly, I think it was kind of a good thing. It kind of forced me to make some stitches up, just make stuff up. It resulted in some really successful stitches and others that are honestly a little bit questionable. It was kind of liberating to just be like, you know what? It's fine. It just needs to hold down these pieces of fabric in a more aesthetic way than my basting stitches. And let me tell you, that is a pretty low bar. Also, if anybody is wondering what I'm working on at the moment, I'm actually using this slightly lighter colored orange thread to go in and tack down this herringbone stitch right here because the green wool right here is quite thick so when i folded it over on this edge it's sitting much higher than the gray wool underneath it which meant that my herringbone stitch had just kind of a big air gap underneath it because the green was so thick so now i'm just going in with this lighter orange and literally just tacking down the herringbone stitch right at that seam where the big gap is and this is again something i'm just kind of making up like i didn't see that i should do this anywhere but it just felt like because this is going to be a bag that i wanted all my stitches to be fairly tight i don't want anything to be like loose that could snag on something and so i was like you know what this is just gonna look like a decorative touch but it's also gonna be pulling double duty because it's gonna be holding these darker orange stitches down a bit tighter at least that's the theory like i said i don't know what i'm doing i'm just winging it so those are my late night musings uh at the moment i We'll come back to you later when I'm in a better light and show you where I'm at because I am quite happy with how it's going. I can give you a rundown on some of the stitches that I am using, whether they're made up or real. So yeah, let's just, I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Later today. Bye. story we are actually supposed to be at the theater right now working hence all of this but apparently after sitting in stop and go traffic for almost an hour our driver showed up at the wrong hotel so we're back up in our rooms uh just hanging out and waiting for him to show up at the correct hotel to pick us up and in the meantime I've just been plugging away at this and I am super happy with how it is turning out. 
So I thought I could give you a quick rundown of sort of the four main stitches I've been using to tack these panels down because there are in fact only four that I've been using and variations of them. And all of them can be conveniently located in this corner here. So first I have been using the herringbone stitch up on top, then underneath it, the blanket stitch, followed by what I am calling the T-Rex stitch because it looks a little bit like T-Rex footprints right there. And then this guy right here, whose name I always forget, I think it's feather stitch, vine seed stitch. I'll put the name up once I figure out what it is. So those are the four stitches that I've been using and then just kind of doing variations on them. So like over here, you can see that this one is a much larger herringbone than that one. Or if we go find my favorite one, this is the alternating T-Rex again, very official, but look at that. It's like they're doing a little dance a line dance. So those are basically just been kind of alternating on using those. Where I'm working at right now is another variation on the T-Rex stitch. Uh, this one, he has five toes instead of three. So I'm just gonna keep plugging away on this until our driver shows up. I would say, if I can get it off my foot, I would say that I am about between a third and halfway done with doing all of the main stitches and then I can go back through and do all of the extra embellishments on it, which I'm kind of seeing as optional. As long as I can get all the main pieces tacked down, then I can add the lining and I can go back in later to do embellishments if I want to while the lining is in there. And I think I'm definitely gonna be able to get this done by the time I get back to Montreal because, oop. sewing with me because usually backstage is a ton of waiting, especially on a contract like this. But we were really pleased when we were in, built up, performed, cooled off, and loaded out within the span of a few very busy hours, leaving me no time to sew and only time to make a few furry friends on set. Then after a couple days visiting the city, we were back on a plane on our way home. So I've gone through off camera and added some more notions, some buttons, ribbon, rickrack, and miscellaneous beads. All of it being just stuff I had laying around my stash, collected over the years as I suspect many of us do, and a lot of it came from free sidewalk garbage piles, all that kind of crafting stuff that I couldn't pass up even though I didn't know what exactly to do with it at the time. Well, now I've found somewhere to put it, and this was also a great time to experiment with the more, let's say, organic looking arrangements, like here, for example because with the beads and the buttons and such, it's just, that's not a style of creativity that I'm as comfortable with. My comfort zone is very much more type A, a very controlled and orderly sort of creativity. So I think that this was a really good project for me to try some new styles and let my creativity go a little bit freer. And now I'm at a point where I think it looks good enough that I'm ready to call it done and sew it up. had just seam ripped the whole bag and it could be laid flat, I used it to measure out the lining for this bag. So really quick, let's talk about this community patchwork project that I mentioned at the start of the video. I've absolutely fallen in love with the crazy quilt concept for so many reasons. And also there were just a lot of thoughts and techniques, details on stitches and other parts of the process that I didn't get to touch on in this video that I wanna explore it further and make another video on it. But I was thinking, I want you to be part of the process. 
if you want to, that is. So I've rented a PO box for the next couple months and I would be absolutely chuffed if you would consider sending me some of your fabric scraps to add to my patchwork project. I would love to build the entire thing out of patchwork from you, my viewers, if that's possible. And I will say that I do feel kind of bad asking you guys to do something that requires you to spend actual money. So I wanna be clear that you don't have to. Uh, and if you decide you want to, I'd be happy with scraps that are small enough to fit into a normal envelope, like a letter with minimal postage. So if you have a scrap collection and the time, resources, and desire to be a part of this next patchwork project, I would be honestly honored and touched if you would consider contributing. <laughs> The last time I did a community patchwork project was my robe from Lord of the Rings and every time I wear it, it's such a lovely reminder of all the people in my neighborhood who came together to donate to that project. So if you're interested, my PO box is here up on screen and it'll be in the description as well. Plus, if you're in one of the following cities, I'll actually be in your area in person performing at some point in November or December, and you could potentially skip the postage and give me your scraps in person if you are so inclined. So feel free to message me on Instagram or send me an email if you're in one of these cities and would like to try and meet up. And also make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along on the adventure and so that you can be sure you actually see the video when it's released. And if you can't get enough Shannon Makes, I do have a Patreon if you wanna support the channel further, but also it's the holidays and I know everyone is tight on cash. So honestly, just giving the video a like, leaving a little comment, and especially sharing the video with your fellow crafters and quilters goes a huge way towards boosting the channel. But for now, enough talk, let's roll the beauty shots. I'm clearly super happy with my first foray into the crazy quilt concept since I wanna continue and make more. Now, is this the perfect knitting bag specifically? Maybe not. Finding that bag in the garbage was too good of a starting point to pass up, but it also wasn't the ideal size or shape for a knitting bag. So while this definitely will work in the meantime, I may have fallen in love with another design that's specifically meant to hold knitting supplies. So I think that might be my next video. Stay tuned for that, but in the interim, I have an absolutely gorgeous patchwork bag that's cozy and hobbitsy and was the perfect place to use up at least some of my orphaned crafting supplies collected through the years. Have you ever tried crazy quilting? If not, are you now inspired to? Does this seem like a good way to use up some of your own scrap collection if, like me, it is rather large? Let me know down in the comments, and if you'd like to check out Christine's video, the one that inspired mine, it's right here. And if you haven't seen my patchwork robe and you're up for some great storytelling, that's gonna be right here. Thanks so much for watching. I will be looking out for everybody's mail if they feel like contributing scraps, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!